Good morning, everyone. Brian Matthews here with another video for you from Southern Pine Outdoors. And today is Wild Game Wednesday. We are going to make deer stew, or in other words, beef stew, just with deer meat. Some of the things that you will need, obviously, are your cubed deer meat thawed and uh, cut up. One onion cut up, three cloves of garlic, two tablespoons of tomato paste, whatever brand you want, um, a teaspoon of whisk sour sauce, however you say it, um, some olive oil to actually brown the meat, and then paprika, rosemary, parsley, and three cups of beef broth. Um, you can add some other spices and things like that, but I am currently out of stock on that. Um, you're probably wondering where are the carrots? Get you a couple of carrots. We have the baby carrots. Um, we currently don't have potatoes. Most people put potatoes in them, but um, just didn't have time to go to the grocery store and to, to make this video. So the first thing you want to do is take your meat, set it to the side of the skillet, grab your olive oil, turn your pan on, I would say probably around medium, medium high, and put your little bit of olive oil in there or just regular oil, whatever you're willing to use. Set that aside, you won't ever need the oil again. Um, get the pan heated up a little bit. And basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna brown the meat, um, just kind of sear it on the outside a little bit all on all sides of the meat. And then while that's heating up, what we can go ahead and do is take our slow cooker here and I'm going to go ahead and plug it in and get it rocking and rolling and start with my beef broth. Now we need three cups of this. So let's see if I can get this right. There's two cups, and then what I'm gonna do, go ahead and throw the onions in. Like I say, that's just one onion. We had baby carrots. Basically, we're, we're going through our refrigerator with whatever we have. Um, so that's why we're kind of missing some of the ingredients. Now that the pan's getting kind of hot, we're gonna throw that meat in. And I'm just going to throw it all in at one time. Now the amount of meat that you need, uh, most of your recipes call for two pounds, um, but we're going to do just one pound. Since it's just the two of us um, and, and try to have more vegetables than, than meat itself, um, what you can do is take your garlic cloves and throw them into the pan itself. Um, that way they kind of get heated up or whatever, but I'm just going to throw them into the crock pot itself. need a can opener.
you're going to need two tablespoons of tomato paste. I'm going to put a little extra in there just for the heck of it. And then we will check on our meat here in just a second. It calls for a teaspoon of paprika. A teaspoon of rosemary. If you have some thyme, you can put that into it too. We don't have time today, so that's why we're kind of rushing around a little bit. And the last ingredient that you'll actually need or that we have here ourselves is the one tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce. And I like mine a little tangy, so I'm gonna put just a little bit more. Now what I'm doing is I'm saving that last cup of beef broth for when I go to put the meat in. Um, you will, uh, obviously since this is a slow cooker, um, you can cook it on high for maybe four to six hours, um, but my personal preference would be, and this is why we're doing this so early in the morning, uh, is to actually put it on low and let it go basically all day. Um, some people may not feel safe leaving their appliances on all day, which you know, I think most Americans do, or most people do, uh, you know, so it, this is a real simple way to, to go ahead and, and have something prepared uh, by the time you get home from work. Um, if, you, if you can wake up early enough in the morning to, to get it started and everything, um, so what saved me some time is actually cutting up all the vegetables and, and all of that and kind of laying the, uh, the ingredients out the night before. And then all I had to do was come in here and pull my meat out of the refrigerator, uh, because it is processed, um, our processor does an okay job of actually cutting up the 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 deer into cubes but there were some bigger pieces in there and obviously some of them had a little bit of fat still left on them so i just wanted to go ahead and clean that up um so once this beef gets done that's basically it we're going to throw the beef in there with the one more cup of uh beef broth and then stir it up and let it sit for about eight to 10 hours. Um, so it's real simple. Once you have all your, like I say, once you have all the ingredients chopped up and everything, um, once it gets done cooking, when you come home at the end of the day and, and you're walking in and you're smelling that goodness, uh, the only other thing that you can do, um, it's just totally optional, is you can take a quarter cup or so of, um, of all-purpose flour, put that in a bowl, uh, maybe a, a mixing bowl of some sort, and then carefully dip uh, your measuring cup or, or, or just a regular cup or a spoon even, um, and get two or three scoops of uh, the actual broth that's in here in the slow cooker. Mix it together and then pour it back in, and that should thicken up your uh, your beef stew if, if you desire to do that. Um, I will probably do that at the end and show you all that process just so that there's no if ands, or buts about it. Um, and, and like I say, we're not trying to cook this beef all the way through, so 
you may see, still see a little bit of blood and everything. Um, and then we're going to toss those in there. And I'm using a slotted spoon or you can use like a spatula or something like that. Um, especially with the deer meat, um, I try not to use the actual fat and the grease from it uh, to take as much of the gaminess out of it as possible. Um, you know, a lot of people don't particularly care for it. Some people, it doesn't, doesn't bother them. Um, me personally, it doesn't bother me, but the wife, um, she does not particularly like all that gaminess, which is another thing I do uh, is I try to let all of my meat, my deer meat uh, in, in particular, thaw out about two nights before, or uh, uh, yeah, two nights before, and then I'll actually put it in a mixing bowl in the refrigerator in water and drain it and then basically uh, let all that blood kind of seep out of the meat and uh, try to try to get as much of that blood out of it and that gaminess taste out of it as possible. Now we're just going to add that one last cup of beef broth, which is basically almost this, this entire box here. You may want to add a little bit more as it goes on. Um, if you do stay at the house, you can probably just cover up the meat, but we're going to mix it in real good. Basically, you're trying to break up that tomato paste that's in there and that way it kind of has a little bit of a even consistency around the, the entire pot. And I may add the rest of this beef broth just to kind of make it a little bit more. This is a three cup box for those that don't know. Um, I'm sorry, four cup box. So uh, that way I don't have to worry about it because I'm not going to be here at the house all day and I can just let it cook and do its thing. So I will leave the uh, ingredients and directions uh, down in the description as always um, and that way y'all can check that out we're gonna come back in about eight to six to eight hours and uh, check on it and then do that flour to thicken it up if it needs it and uh, see how good it tastes so stay tuned and uh, appreciate y'all watching and uh, yeah Let's see how it turns out. All right, everybody, we are back. It's been about seven and a half, eight hours. Uh, actually, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. It's been almost nine hours. Um, it's, it's about 30 minutes till, uh, so eight and a half hours. Um, we have got our mixing bowl. We put uh, basically a half a cup of flour and then probably about, I'd say two cups worth of the broth that was in here. Um, to make basically like a gravy, um, just to kind of mix that uh, that flour up. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna pour it into the mix here.
And then we're just going to basically stir what we have here. And that will thicken up what you currently have as far as the broth. And I'm going to turn it on warm um, just because I know everything is pretty much done and we probably won't eat for another 30 minutes or so. Um, just let it finish kind of basically simmer through. And that's basically it. Uh, you can add a little bit more flour if you want to. Um, just make sure you really stir it up as you pour it in there to really thicken it up if you want it more of a, a gravy consistency instead of a stew consistency. Um, that little bit right there, um, it thickened it up a little bit, but not terribly, too terribly much. Um, and then the only other thing that we're going to do is uh, cook some rice. Um, you can obviously put some mashed potatoes with it. If you have potatoes in it already, you can eat it just like that. That's how most people do. Um, and then, uh, like I say, it just makes for a great, uh, easy uh, meal that you can do um, without even being at home. It, it automatically cooks and everything for you. So uh, if y'all have any questions, please feel free to leave us a comment down below. We appreciate y'all watching the videos and subscribing to the videos and to the channel. Uh, I will once again leave all the ingredients and directions um, to this particular recipe. Um, you don't have to follow it to a T. Obviously, I didn't either, but if it helps you out, like I say, you can uh, substitute certain things or try something new and see if it, if it tastes any better. But I uh, hope this helps y'all out as far as getting uh, giving you an idea of what you can do with your, your deer stew or beef stew. And uh, we appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned to the next one.